Ah, uh, Veligion and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and today we're gonna do our E4 starting moves guide for the nation of Congo. And this guide will be going over the initial diplomatic situation, early wars, later expansion, as well as the ideas that you should go for and how to spawn institutions. If we get a thousand likes on the video, I'm also gonna do a starting moves guide for the nation of Benin, the secret Prussia of Africa. And guys, if you want to see more videos such as these in the future, consider subscribing. It would really mean the world to me. And encourage me to make more videos such as this one. Congo's initial diplomatic situation is quite a decent one. Despite being an African nation, you do start off with two vassals, namely the nation of Luongo as well as the nation of Ndongo. And your vassal Luongo has a gems province as their capital province. So after you've integrated this nation, you're going to get a lot more income from this one province alone. Not to mention you get the chance of getting some golden provinces from this area after you colonize. Aside from that, pretty much everybody else in inside of the Congo and Central African region want to ally you but we're not gonna do that I actually recommend that you get only one or two allies maximum the furthest away from you possible so for example Kikonja and Kazembe are good alliance options because they are quite far from you so for the early part of the game what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna try to unify the Congolese area and that means kill everybody here followed by killing everybody in the Interlacostine area and then later on afterwards go into the Mutapan area to get the juicy gold mines that we have here. We got four gold mines we're going to take from there and the other one from Kilwa. But until we get to that point, we got to get claims because we don't have any missions that give us claims. So we're going to start getting some claims on all of our neighbors. You don't even need to get any alliances to be fair. You're really strong as a nation, probably the strongest within this area. But the only reason I would recommend you getting alliances is simply because of the lowered aggressive expansion that you get with these nations. If they are your ally, whilst you take care of the other ones and the central part and then you break the alliance and eat them up also. You cannot have any rivals at the start and when it comes to your estate I recommend you summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits you followed up by seizure of land and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the plus one admin point for the clergy as we want to keep up with our admin points and the oversight of the clergy supremacy over the tribes as well as the strong duchies so we keep our vassals in check here and we get an extra two diplo slots and from the merchants guild the free enterprise patronage of the arts to get an extra bit of prestige and the private trade fleets. You also want to go and uh, select your cult as you are a fetishist nation. You can either go for discipline or tolerance of the true faith. I recommend discipline so you have easy wars since we will have quite a few wars in the early game. We also need to recruit our free company since having the free company means we can use them up to siege down capital cities so that we don't actually lose our own manpower when sieging. You also have six light ships and we're going to send our light ships to Patrictate in the Ivory Coast while the other trader we're gonna send into the interlacostine trade area to collect so that way we're collecting from all three of the trade nodes that we start off in after you got your initial claims go ahead and attack everybody around you go for the weakest links first so for example Tio here is allied only to the nation of Kasanje and I am gonna cobalajrate Kasanje even though that means I'm gonna lose my alliance with Kikonja it really doesn't matter since I will be both annexing Kasanje fully and the nation of Tio now these nations are gonna have considerably small smaller armies than you have so it really should be quite a piece of cake uh, handling over these wars make sure you stack wipe their armies in the early times of the war so that you don't need to wait around and just chase them afterwards sometimes they like to go around the whole world they like to do what is called a tour of Europa Universalis 4 don't let them do that and just wipe them out before they even realize what's happening when piecing out your initial targets make sure you piece out the non cobalt nations first and go for money as long as you don't go for too many years of truce you should be fine the idea behind this is that if we have 15 years or 10 years of truce with the nation here it will be a little bit of a problem as within 50 years we already will have our borders here so that we want to attack and conquer these nations so that wouldn't be possible if we have a longer truce with them that being said after we finish with them we're gonna first off peace out the cobalagerated nations and we're gonna give these out to our vassals at the start I recommend you keep your vassals around five provinces to six provinces strong before you integrate them this is basically so that you don't waste extra admin points to core up these provinces instead what you're gonna do is basically just uh, get these provinces that you've taken in the wars from your vassals after you've integrated your vassals so now that we're ready with this we're gonna be attacking the next set of nations and when deciding which nation to go for next of course go for the nation with the least amount of allies Yaka has two extra allies that would be a bit of an issue for us 
whilst Cuba only has one other ally since they dropped Yaka as an alliance and set them up as a rival. So we're gonna go for these guys. We're not gonna Cobladrade Luba as Luba has quite a few extra allies that I'm not interested in fighting for the time being and I will want to piece them out with the white piece so that I get five years of truce with them. Another thing you might have noticed is that I deleted my fleet. That is simply because I don't need the transport ships and I will not need them for quite a while. So it's basically useless having them right now. It's a, just a money drain. Taking out the uh, Cuba armies or the Lunda armies is really easy. To be fair, taking all of these nations out is ridiculously easy. If you want to do it, you can actually attack all nations at the same time and still win the wars as you will likely have a lot more troops than they do have all together. Mostly they have like 2,000 up to four, 5,000 units. I've never seen them get up to 8,000 for example. One major thing I would worry about however is the fact that you start off as a nation that does not have few feudalism embraced and we need to embrace it. You also have admin, diplo and military tech too. So leveling up your tech right now is 50% more expensive. We do have an ace up our sleeve and that is basically the province of you in my game or whatever it's called in your game as well as a few other adjacent provinces here which are all grasslands which means it's decently cheap to start developing these provinces. Do remember to encourage development and you only have 47 points in order to boost this up a little bit we will be spawning in feudalism in this province but in order to make this cheaper we need to have a more development overall for our nation so before we start spawning in feudalism we're actually going to expand our nation a little bit more and as I was saying before the provinces that are pretty far away from you go ahead and white piece or take cash if you really want to take the cash so that we have a pretty short amount of truce with them and then for the main war target we're actually just going to take all of their provinces for our ourselves this time as you can see it's quite a little bit of admin points that we're going to be using up for this 135 but it is necessary as it grants us access to other adjacent provinces so that means adjacent countries that we can attack ourselves and it looks like by attacking Yaka and Kobladrading Chokwe we go to war with Luba once more this time however it's going to be a little bit different and you'll see why in just a few moments we're going to be focusing on these guys of course and before we even piece them out we're going to attack the other alliance block of Lunda allied to Kikonje and Kazambe. So that literally means everybody in this area except for the nation of Kalundwe. The reason for this is because Kalundwe just got an alliance with Mutapa. So because they're allied to Mutapa that means that we can attack and also we can take stuff from Mutapa without having to no CB them which is actually quite great. So in this situation before you even piece anybody out declare war on the other nations you have an interest in and for example I cannot cobaladrate Kazembe because Kazembe's ally is Kalundwe which I want to attack in a separate war so that I can bring their allies into my war Mutapa. So we're gonna rush ahead with this war as well and we're gonna skip ahead to when we actually finish everything and start piecing everybody out and the short war is finished we are now gonna piece out the nations from the first war I am actually gonna give the provinces of Chokwe to my vassal even though I said you should keep them around five provinces if they grow by a few extra provinces it's not a massive deal and it will help you out with coring these without you having to do it yourself. So we'll give this out first since this is a cobelagerated nation. So taking less aggressive expansion for it. But now here's the big deal, right? We also want to take the provinces of Luba. And we cannot do that unless we piece out the other war first. So we're fully annexing all of these guys. And we're going to do the same thing with Luba also. This is giving you extra aggressive expansion outside of your area. That means within the Interlaquistine area. But not to worry even if they band together against you it's really not gonna be that much of a big deal and last but not least the nation that we attacked initially Alyaka there you go we finished off all of central Congo by 1455 except these bad boys which we will be attacking as soon as we get a claim on them so that we can go to war with Mutapa so that we can get their gold mines you might have noticed we have quite a bit of extra provinces we got a core up it's not actually that expensive roughly around 300 admin points to core everything up but we're not gonna do that we are actually gonna make a new vassal so we're gonna go to our screen here we're gonna go to create vassal and we're gonna make a luba a vassal you might be wondering why didn't you just vassalize them in the war where you would have had pretty bad relations with them if that was the case and despite this giving you a little bit of extra liberty desire for your vassals it's not a big deal you can easily deal with this if you really need to you can just placate them or you can develop their provinces a little bit but as soon as you core up the other 
provinces, you shouldn't have any issues. And the beauty of this whole thing is that you can also feed Luba some extra provinces if you want to, so that you don't need to core him up yourself. Do make sure that you keep the province of Tabwa so you can start claiming uh, provinces within the Interlacostine area, so that we can attack them also. We've also cored everything up, now we're gonna wait for a little while to get our claim on Lawunde, and as such start our war against Mutapa. So a few years have passed, we got our claim on the nation of Kalundwe, which means we're gonna bring in Mutapa, but before we do that, Mutapa is actually ahead of tech of us, they have military tech 3 whilst we still have military tech 2. Now we could just go ahead and take the next technology, but we're not gonna waste our points like that, since we have a 58% debuff from feudalism and renaissance. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our province here in U, make sure that we have the encouraged development edict set up, and we're gonna start pumping all of our points into this one province here. If you go to the institution screen, the more times you buff this up, the more points you get towards spawning in feudalism. Almost there, now we're gonna use a little bit of the extra points as well, not just our military points, and voila, feudalism is present. That means we can adopt it as long as we have 285 ducats. We're gonna take a couple of loans here so that we can adopt feudalism, and there you go. We now are one step closer to our European buddies, and it only costs us 600 military points to adopt this, not freaking 1,000. That being said, you also wanna spawn in Renaissance. Do not spawn it in the same province though. Spawn it in an adjacent province. You have quite a few provinces here, which are fairly cheap to develop since they are grasslands provinces. And you might have noticed that I've changed the names of my provinces. That is because I've decided to start naming my provinces and my guides to the names of my beloved patrons and subscribers over on Twitch and even here on YouTube. Patreon is actually one of the best choices of supporting me and encouraging me to do more videos like these in the future. Also, if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend that you check out my Twitch channel. I do almost daily streams and I have a really awesome community that I would be more than happy to see you a part of. And so the war starts. Make sure if you are in this situation that you go ahead and cobblage raid Mutapa so that you bring their allies in as well as we want to basically bring everybody into the fold from this area as well. Luckily we managed to capture the army of Kalunde in Pantis the Piggy, the best Piggy province around. We're also going to wipe out the remainder of their armies here before we head on over to Mutapa to get a cup of sugar. And by sugar I mean to absolutely kill all of them. Looks like Mutapa decided to come here first in Vala Kenya. Boom yeah, yuppie boys, we destroyed them. We're going to go to Timbukuwa so we can get their capital and get them out of the war before we peace out Mutapa because we cannot take any provinces from Utapa since we cannot core them and they are too big of a nation to actually vassalize since it would cost us 104 war score as they did develop their provinces a little bit. That means we have to go ahead and vassalize Timbukuwa first and then feed our new Timbukuwan vassal the provinces in Mutapa that have gold. This is the reason why I wanted to cobblage raid Mutapa so that I can bring in their allies that are bordering them. We're not going to peace out the other guys here until we finish our work over into the south here. It would seem that Kilwa also had an interest in this area and they took the siege of Makwa so we cannot really vassalize Makwa too. We will be vassalizing Timbukuwa and we are going to make them our main vassal in this area. That means that we can now actually take provinces from Mutapa as they are adjacent to our Timbukuwa vassal. We've also managed to integrate our other two initial vassals and as such we've grown quite a bit in size. So our interest is mainly in these three gold mines here. So we're going to basically just snake our way in that area all the way to Zimbabwe. If you want, you can also take other provinces. It's your choice. It's not a lot of aggressive expansion and it's mainly just nations in the Interlacostine area that would join in a coalition against you. So it's really nothing to actually be worried about. We're going to go back to our main war target here and we're going to piece them out. Also, booyah, no more wars for a while and literally the only nations in a coalition are these smaller ones and these here. With Kilwa not even having that much aggressive expansion against us as they don't really care about fetishist nations killing other fetishist nations. So now that we took this area, we got two choice, either directly own it or feed it to our vassal. It is your own choice. I personally do 
enjoy leaving it as my own land even if it takes a bit longer to core everything it's not a big deal it will help a lot since these gold mines are gonna fuel our expansion in Africa for the first 50 years or so you also should be able to do the wealth of Africa now since you are basically a very rich nation and your first government reform of course you want to go for the martial society to get the extra national manpower so when it comes to your later expansion what you really want to do is finish off the nations in the Victoria Lake area basically nowadays Uganda all the other nations in the Zimbabwe area and after that you want to attack Kilwa and finish them off as well basically you want to take all of the nations that you can actually see out within the first 20 to 30 years after that's done you got to go ahead and go for your first idea set and that should definitely be exploration ideas as you need to start exploring the world and I recommend that you explore the new world first so that you can get your colonies go for Brazil and work your way over towards the Caribbean central Mexico and so on afterwards start exploring the rest of Africa and everything else around when it comes to ideas obviously go for exploration first expansion as your second idea set followed by quantity ideas and later down the line trade and even religious ideas can be extremely good for your nation that is gonna be it for today I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave a like if we got a thousand likes I'm gonna do another country guide for the nation of Benin I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my twitch subscribers and everybody else over on patreon and YouTube who support me I wouldn't be able to do these videos and have a YouTube channel that I can sustain without your support so thank you so much guys for all of it from the bottom of my heart it really means the world to me if you want to see more guides like these in the future don't forget to also subscribe and leave the bell button on otherwise you will not get notified and I also want to give a very big thank you to all of my patrons and channel members thank you so much guys for all the support you've been offering me I wouldn't be here without you right now if anybody else wants to become a patron or a channel member you can check the links in the description so until the next one have a great day everybody